Hi there, this is Mark Barnabas, your Data Protection Pal, and it's time again to review some of the articles throughout the week about data protection and cybersecurity. I've got really interesting articles and some kind of controversial. So let's look at them right now. So the first article that I picked up was this article from the ABC News, Australia Broadcasting Network, that the Australians are not very happy with Google collecting their data because they said that Google is collecting the data unethically. Do you think so? Uh, you know those those buttons you would click consent, yes, 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 on your cell on your cell phones or in your browsers. It could be giving away consent. But you know, I don't think Google is the only one being unethical here. I mean, several websites ask you for consent and peop most people uh, would just click yes because they want to go to the next page. So uh, my advice to most people and everybody is be careful of what you give when you go online, especially uh, all these websites asking you to give consent for cookies or, or log in. So I make it a good habit to clear my cookies every two weeks. So maybe you want to do that as well so that, you know, these uh, websites don't collect or don't collect over, don't over collect data from you. Okay, so on to the next article. It's TikTok. They have been in the news again. Yes, TikTok in the news again. And this time, TikTok has been fine in South Korea. This is this is a big hit for Byte uh, Byte Dance China's this China company that owned called Byte Dance that owns TikTok. And uh, first they've been banned in India, and now they got fined in South Korea. I wonder whether the Singapore government or the Malaysian government or any governments around Southeast Asia is going to do anything about TikTok. Let's wait and see if TikTok comes in the news again for the wrong reasons. And by the way, do you use TikTok? I don't. I, can't, I, I really don't like this app very much. But, you know, I'm learning. Well, we'll see. Now, this is another alarming news that, you know, scammers are impersonating officers again in Singapore. And mind you, again, this is not the first time there are scammers, uh, not even sure whether they're Singaporeans or from elsewhere, but it's not the first time there have been articles about scammers impersonating officers from the public service or even uh, reputable companies like the telcos or the power, uh, the infrastructure companies. So it's very disturbing that, you know, even during this COVID period, there are scammers who are so unethical in their ways, using the situation to just con people. So be really, really careful, be very vigilant to make sure you defend yourself against scammers and be very vigilant, not only for yourself, but also warn the people around you, your family members, especially the elderly. Yes, yeah, talk about elderly. This next article really worries me and really concerns the elderly. And what's this article about? You know, this article is about uh, DBS Bank, one of the major banks in Singapore, uh, going to use uh, facial recognition for verification to apps and they include banking and even the, the local Sing, SingPass app. Uh, this to me is a very disturbing news because I can't imagine uh, 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 elderly folk who may not be so savvy with using the cell phone who could be scammed by anybody on the street saying, uh, can you log into your SingPass app or even your, your bank app and then they just bring the phone to the face and they have access. I think this is very disturbing because I, 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 well, while it is very convenient, we must understand that between security and convenience, I rather choose security. I think fingerprint is good, but for me, facial recognition is a nay. What about you? Are you pro facial recognition for bank apps or even SingPass app? Or are you, like me, disagree with using facial recognition? That's re the reason, by the way, I don't buy the iPhone 10, 11. I still use the iPhone 8 with the fingerprint verification. Next. This is a news that, you know, kind of contravenes the first article that we picked up about Google again. Yes, uh, I, I, I love to mention about Google because it's one of my most used uh, social media or, or rather collaboration apps. And uh, this came as a good news for Google that, you know, the German court ruled that Google uh, was compliant. And that's why I say Google 1, GDPR 0. So the, the court in Germany decided that 
Google was innocent and they didn't, they actually complete, they actually ob, uh, completed all the obligations with regards to GDPR and local uh, German laws. So this was a good win for Google. So perhaps a, 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 a kind of like cancels out whatever that didn't work out so well in Australia. And finally, the last article that I'm going to pick up this week is an article that I love because it is two topics that I'm so passionate and so uh, involved in, and that is, of course, data protection and CSR. CSR, for those of you who are not familiar, stands for Corporate Social Responsibility. So, you know, this article, Mondac, uh, from Italy, all right, uh, proposes that, you know, data protection could and should be part of corporate social responsibility. Now, let me tell you a bit about corporate social responsibility. Corporate social responsibility basically means a company makes a lot of money and does good to give back to the society, the environment, or even uh, the, uh, the, uh, what, the uh, or give back to the poor, right? So, um, or even staff. So CSR also involves uh, ergonomics and ethics. So I guess data protection is part of ethical practices and I strongly support that data protection should be part of CSR. So every company or every agency, every organization, whether for profit or non-profit, should take up data protection as one of their important trusts in the company to take care of not only data of their staff but also of their customers and other stakeholders. So therefore, that's why I'm here. Data Protection Pal is here to advocate data protection education in all companies and even in schools. So I look forward to see you next week. My name is Mark Barnabas and I would like to shout out to anybody who would like to work with me to advocate data protection and cybersecurity education not only in corporations but also in the schools. And can I ask you to also, if you're interested to Get a one-page summary of the Data Protection Act in Singapore. Just scan this QR code and don't forget to like this, uh, this video and subscribe. So have a good day and be safe, not only physically but also digitally. So good day and God bless.